All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know, for quite some time, I've been living a, uh, a troubled existence, and I'm not trying to be funny here. I am so terrified that our power grid will go down, and I've been terrified uh, over this for quite some time, many, many years. And after hearing uh, uh, Trent Franks speak um, several months ago at a, a Women's Republican Club here in New York City, um, I, 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 I don't know how the whole nation isn't terrified and petrified, and I don't understand how the Congress and the, the administration has not addressed the problems that exist that could leave this country vulnerable to an attack, many, many different forms of attack that will take down our power grid for six months to a year or more, killing millions of Americans, no food, no medicine, no transportation, chaos, anarchy, and they're not addressing it. And joining us now to talk about that, uh, hopefully he'll quell my fears, although I don't know that he will, um, and also to weigh in on the, uh, the uh, attack that took place at the power station in San Jose, which the FBI said, don't worry, it was not a terrorist attack. Whew, that's a relief. Um, joining us now is uh, John Wellinghoff, attorney and former chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission under both Bush and President Obama. And uh, John, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. All right. Then start scaring or t start telling us what you know. First of all, let's focus on San Jose. You believe that was a terrorist attack? Well, I, I know this. I can tell you what I know. What I know is it was an attack that was purposeful, done with the intention to destroy a very high-value, very important part of our electric grid infrastructure, which were high-voltage substations. And that attack was extremely well planned and it was then very very well executed in a professional manner by people who had a very high degree of training so that's what i know okay uh, th th let's leave it at that that's pretty self-explanatory now tell me how vulnerable you think we are to that kind of attack to take down our grid an M a emp attack to take down our grid a cyber attack to take down our grid any kind of attack that could take down a grid. So my question, I guess, is first, how vulnerable is our power grid encompassing everything? Well, currently I think we're very vulnerable to this type of a physical attack because it's been demonstrated to us now that there are people who have the training capability to perpetrate this type of attack and execute it. Um, given that, um, the infrastructure that they went after, which are these high-voltage substations, very, very few of them, if any of them, are protected uh, in any substantial way. Most of them are protected primarily by a chain link fence. Uh, they may have a camera or two inside the fence and some lights at night, but there's no 24-7 uh, guards. There's not even you know, any, any attempt to make the fence opaque so you can't see through it uh, from 1,000 yards out. So right now, these, these particular parts of our electric infrastructure are extremely vulnerable to physical attack. Okay. Why on earth is that the case? What is it that has stopped, prevented uh, Congress or the people that have to act, I'm assuming it's Congress, from addressing this? Well, that's a very good question, Steve, because it's not like, you know, this event that took place on April 16th was the first time that someone has suggested that these things are vulnerable. There was an, a report in 1981 by the, uh, gener the uh, uh, Comptroller General to Congress. There was a report in 2004. There was a report in 2000, uh, 2012. Again, all multiple government reports that all pointed out very specifically that these particular parts of the grid, that is high-voltage transformers at these high-voltage substations, are the most vulnerable part of the grid from a physical attack. So this is something that, you know, for the last... 30 plus years people have talked have talked about as part of the infrastructure that should and needs to be protected so you know i'm not sure i can answer your question right, why right. over that 30 year period somebody hasn't said hey maybe we need to do something but i'm hoping that this particular event that demonstrates very graphically that people actually have this capability will now move people into action we're talking to John Wellinghoff, a former chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission under two presidents here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Um, I, 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 what needs to be done? In other words, 
it, it, are we talking are, are drop in the bucket in the overall budget if they decided to do something to secure it? Uh, I guess it, you need enhanced security at these facilities, but you know, there's other ways that we haven't discussed specifically, like an EMP attack or the cyber attack. What would the cost be, and how long would something like this take to, 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 to do and get in place on almost all these levels? Well, first of all, uh, you know, starting one at a time, with respect to the physical attack, you know, the industry talks about there's 45,000 substations, although as it turns out there's only about 100 of them that are really the most critical, that have the most um, susceptible and most uh, the, the, the most important high-voltage uh, transformers contained in them that transform power out to our, our high-voltage transmission lines. To protect those would be a relatively inexpensive thing to do. I mean, number one, put up an opaque fence of some kind so you couldn't see through it. And number two, you, if, you, if you want to, you could actually put what they call jersey barriers in front of, of the uh, uh, transformers themselves so you know, it would stop a, 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 a ballistic projectile. Um, there's a number of things you could do that are relatively inexpensive on the physical side. And I think this physical security is uh, the highest level of risk for you know, the, uh, the least amount of money we can, we can stop that risk. And then you talk about EMP, you talk about um, electromagnetic pulse, you talk about cybersecurity, you know, those are different problems that, that take different solutions and will cost different amounts of money. Uh, but I don't think, uh, you know, those are as, as likely or as possible or as easy to do as somebody who could literally, you know, go, to, go and get the equipment at Walmart and take out the grid. Very frightening. Okay, so, uh, I, I, I mean, Iran launches a uh, crude nuclear weapon in the middle of the sea. Nobody's looking. They launch it straight up, um, and it takes out our power grid through an EMP attack. How, uh, how, 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 uh, light, not how likely, because you don't know what Iran's going to do, but how easy would that be to do? I, 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 I'm not an expert in that area. Okay. But I, I, I certainly don't see that as, 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 as easy as, you know, Ten guys and three pickup trucks. Yeah, yeah. With some with some, with some uh, rifles and scopes. Now, if you, I mean, uh, you know, as, as in your capacity, I mean, uh, did you guys ever talk about, you know, what would happen if something like this ever happened? What would happen if the grid went down, or a significant portion of the grid went down? I mean, what what this country would look like? Uh, you know, we hear about Homeland Security buying up millions and millions and millions of rounds of ammunition, the IRS training with guns, and, you know, people with conspiracy theory minds are out there saying they're planning for something. I mean, do, do, you, do you get frightened when you hear all this, or do you think that the government thinks it's got to happen one day and they can't stop it, or what? Well, uh, again, I, I think what we did at FERC is address and look at the side of trying to stop it, trying to do what needs to be done to mitigate these risks, and we, in fact, handed out to a utility executive's proposed checklists of things to do to, in fact, protect these substations from physical attacks. And that's really the side that we worked on it. We really right. did think, you know, think about or work on the other side of, you know, what happens if, if in fact, someone succeeds. Right, I don't, right. I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have to think about that. Unfortunately, my agency didn't have right. any responsibility to think about what happens if, if somebody actually accomplished their objectives. I got to tell you, I mean, if more people knew about this, and, and God bless you, John, for, for coming on and talking about it. And I saw you mentioned in a, in a story uh, related to uh, at USA Today, you related to uh, the attack in San Jose. If, 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 again, there's so much that the average person doesn't know. And if the average person knew this, I mean, I, I, think, I think they demand that their elected officials address it because it is so relatively easy to do. And, and every terrorist in the world must know that it, we're not ready. Well, it, it, it is it is a huge area of concern. It's been a big area of concern for me for a number of years uh, since I was at, at FERC and started to dig into the problem even before April 16th. We were doing, uh, you know, analysis and doing research that looked again back at these previous papers that had been done by other government agencies as to the risks, and we were trying to figure out what needed to be done to hopefully mitigate the risk going forward. Yeah. All right, John. Thank you so much for your time, sir, and I'm sure we'll call on you again. Thank you, Steve. Anytime. Thank you. Uh, that's John Wellinghoff, attorney, former chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission under George Bush and uh, Barack Obama, talking about something that is, it, it, I got to tell you, it's kept me up at night. It really has. And you try to keep yourself prepared, but prepared for what? 
How does the average person get prepared? You could have a generator. You could have a supply of food. You could have a tank full of gas. Um, but you know what? Then you're a have. And one of the stations, was it Natural History Channel or, or, or uh, one of the Discovery? One of them ran a, 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 a documentary or a, the, what it would be like, a movie, a fictional movie, what it would be like if we had a blackout. I think that blackout lasted, the History Channel, what it lasted in the, in the movies, uh, a couple of weeks, four weeks, a month, two months, I don't know, something. I mean, folks, it's, it's better to be the have but then the have-nots in a lawless society with no lights, no electricity, um, no transportation to speak of, no food, no emergency services, no telephone. I mean, primitive living conditions. Then the have-nots will start coming around and knocking, let's say knocking at your door, Mr. Have. Give me some, Mr. Have. I mean, chaos and anarchy. Death and destruction, sickness, no medicine. Can't get medicine, can't go to the drugstore, they can, can't get a shipment, can't pump the gas. I mean, chaos, right? Who could survive it? And with this as a threat, after seeing what happened in San Jose, and this was not the first time, as you heard from John Wellinghoff, fix the 100 stations. Put security around the 100 stations like they were nuclear facilities. And do it yesterday. Instead, nothing's happening. He and I are talking about it, but nothing's getting done. And how could that be when it's such a threat to the survival of the citizenry of the United States of America? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't know why I did that. One of the monitors was at, yeah, CNN had a flag. Uh, there it is, a flag in the background uh, on the show they have on. So it, it just, I, I was moved by the moment. You ever get moved by the moment? Watch this. I got moved by the chair. Sometimes I get moved by the moment. Sometimes I get moved by the chair. And there are different effects from each one. I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. We're coming back. <laughs> uh, right here. Did you hear what the new mayor of New York City may have done you know he's all about fairness fairness get a load of this one on the steve malsberg show newsmax television the steve malsberg show